Kuja. And we all forget that it is you as an individual who adds to the collective numbers. And when one person again stays away in our constituency saying it's only myself, uh, another one is reasoning the same way and eventually we find ourselves that we don't have the numbers. And it's unfortunate, last week, I uh, have to report here, Your Excellency, on Thursday afternoon, uh, the other side were more than us in the House. In fact, at one point, the leader of minority approached me to close debate on the affordable housing bill. Of course, knowing that if we closed at that point, they had the numbers. Uh, but we should be able to conclude that business tomorrow. Hopefully, on Wednesday afternoon, we get into third reading. Again, during third reading, we will be asking all of you to be present so that we are able to conclude with that debate and be able to uh, uh, process the bill forward to the Senate so that they are able to advertise it uh, by Friday, do their public participation, and we get a new affordable housing bill uh, before the next payroll. Uh, and usually many corporations, both private and public, pay, uh, process their payrolls after the 15th of the month. So we hope by the 15th of March, Your Excellency, you will have processed, the, you will have assented to the new affordable housing bill. We also have regulations. I know CS Nakumisha has been working very hard, taking the health laws regulations through public participation, and we expect that to also be coming before the House, uh, both houses this time. We also have a number of bills that are in the Senate, especially touching on agriculture critical bills, and I know the Honorable Aaron Cheruyoti will be speaking to some of those. Your Excellency, in conclusion, let me take this opportunity to also thank members of our cabinet who have been very diligent. I know there are many cabinet secretaries who have not had time to come before the House with the amended standing orders to answer to questions and statements. At times, because many of the questions that will be processed uh, will touch on a few critical areas energy, uh, education, I know CS Machogo has been there quite a number of times, um, uh, roads, and uh, of course uh, uh, security. I know CS Kindiki has also been there quite a number of times. Uh, there also have been issues to do with human wildlife conflict and those, um, the ministers in charge of tourism have also had an opportunity. There are many others who have not had an opportunity. We are making efforts to make sure that you find an opportunity. I will not encourage you to go the Margaret Thatcher regime way, where there was uh, a scandal that was called cash for questions, where cabinet secretaries would pay members of uh, the House of Representatives to ask questions uh, so that you may be able to come and answer them. But we, in the leadership, will make sure that whenever there is a question that touches on any of your departments for those cabinet secretaries who have not had the opportunity to appear before the House, to be able to prioritize those particular uh, ministries to come before the House. Lastly, is to request our cabinet secretaries, every time you find an opportunity to come and answer to a question or to a statement uh, requested by a member of parliament, please take that time as also an opportunity to espouse on government policy. And uh, maybe for instance, uh, I, know, uh, I don't know, C.S. Eliodoalo has not been there, for instance. Uh, if you get an opportunity uh, to answer to a question, take that opportunity to also challenge us as members of parliament to also be a bit uh, quick in pushing through government agenda, especially something like the ICT hubs. It's a perfect opportunity to come and speak to members of parliament and to the country because you have almost a whole hour on uh, TV free of charge. So it's a very good opportunity to also use that to espouse on government policy and push our agenda and market our agenda to the people of Kenya. Uh, and I hope many of you who have that opportunity this year will make use of uh, that time in the House. It doesn't harm to talk to us uh, to generate questions uh, on your behalf. If there's something <laughs> that you want to come and speak to, uh, if there's something on mining and CS Mvuria, you have not seen anybody asking a question, if you talk to me, I can get a member of parliament to generate a question that will offer you an opportunity to come and espouse on what you want to do <laughs> on the agenda of mining. Siswali ni swali. Na kwenye inatoka, 
sio hoja bora ni ujumbe ifikie wenye inafaa kufikia and by speaking to members of parliament from the floor of the house you will also have an opportunity to speak to the country uh, at a prime time when uh, many Kenyans are watching and i'm happy uh, cabinet secretary is like uh, the honorable kipchumba murkomen has uh, done very well in taking advantage of even very difficult questions i remember when there was a question on the allocation of resources to roads and cs murkomen was able to turn around the question and put it back to parliament itself and uh, i remember when he left the house uh, those of us who are members of the Budget Committee and uh, the Roads Committee were pleading with Honorable Murkomen to please not appear back in the House. On the Kamukunji, he promised that he would even want an opportunity to have a Kamukunji with members of Parliament. So I want to encourage other Cabinet Secretaries, please take time, uh, CS uh, Florence, um, on the uh, jobs uh, in the diaspora and uh, other opportunities, CSO Alo on the online jobs uh, through the ICT hubs uh, to use the floor of the house to be able to market what we are doing as a government. Uh, Your Excellency, I know there are also some touchy issues that we'll be speaking to, issues that touch on um, our conduct also as members of parliament, our participation in the house, how as members of parliament who are on the government side ought to carry ourselves on in the house and even outside the house. We've had a number of challenges, a few of them, where, for instance, and this is the best case example, Your Excellency, we have delays in disbursement of NGCDF. Um, and you remember the no, no CDF? It was no CDF, no what? No parliament. <laughs> Uh, and I, Your Excellency, I will often find myself on the receiving end, <laughs> being the leader of the House and being the person who ought to be representing the Cabinet Secretary when he's not there. And you can imagine the situation I find myself in when we have our own members who are leading in the protest of no CDF, <laughs> no Parliament, <laughs> and they're behind me. And across, on the other side of the floor, there is a whole <laughs> brigade of our colleagues from the minority side in the same chorus. So we need to socialize ourselves now that uh, there is no other government other than ourselves. On the floor of parliament, there is no government. It is us who are government on the floor of the house. And therefore, even when there is an agenda that... Um, is not uh, pro-government per se, or where we think government in a way has slackened uh, uh, possibly, and I gave the case example of NGCDF because it also touches on me. And you see the way I also struggle when I'm speaking to say I don't speak for any cabinet secretary, including Professor Ndungu. I speak as a representative of the people of Kikuyu today on NGCDF. Uh, but we do so with caution so that we also do not in any way inside the house, not to carry on with business. Our case example, members are signing signatures to impeach a cabinet secretary on account of non-disbursement of NGCDF. And you find a member of Kenya Kwanza <laughs> signing <laughs> to impeach a cabinet secretary on non-disbursement of NGCDF. <laughs> and it is within our right. But I just want to say, Your Excellency and Honorable Members, it is in our right to oversight these cabinet secretaries, but also to appreciate that all the challenges that we face as a country and as a government, there are no other leaders that we are looking up to to resolve those challenges. We must be part of the solution. And I know we have had challenges with the uh, exchequer releases. We have uh, really harassed uh, CS uh, Ndungu and PS Kipto on NGCDF. But I just pleading for some understanding. In fact, Your Excellency, I was engaging a number of us, a number of chairs of committees, and reminding ourselves last year, which was the second session after the elections, 
and when just before we did our first budget, we will all remember the first NGCDF disbursement was done at the end of February, the very first one. And by June 30th, Your Excellency, 100% of our NGCDF disbursement had been done for the first time since I joined Parliament in 2013. It was the first time that we had NGCDF being disbursed 100%. This time, we have had the same challenges, Your Excellency. The first disbursement of NGCDF uh, uh, was done early January, uh, 10 billion shillings, and the CS National Treasury has committed to a disbursement of 10 billion shillings every month to ensure that by the end of the financial year again, we have 100% uh, disbursement of NGCDF. So it is that kind of understanding that I want to plead with all of us because we know the challenges, Your Excellency, you've had with the uh, uh, debt repayment. I know uh, there is some very bright light at the end of the tunnel now with the uh, opportunities that come with the uh, resolution of the issues to do the, the euro bond and uh, a lot of uh, receipts coming from our development partners. Uh, the exchequer releases will be more uh, efficient than they have been. And these challenges, Your Excellency, are not just in Parliament, and that's why I thought it was fair that I raised this matter here, because I know these members of Parliament also have a lot of pressure, uh, including myself, from our constituents, when NGCDF uh, disbursements are late and uh, children are waiting for uh, bursaries. But we must also not forget that the first uh, disbursements that were done, I think, uh, to the Ministry of Education touched on capitation to our schools. And without the capitation, you can imagine the situation would only get worse. And therefore, it's more important, uh, even as we fight for our disbursements for NGCDF, to also be cognizant of all the other competing challenges. And I say this because I have been chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee in the last parliament. And I'm certain if uh, Honorable Dindinyoro stood here on or Honorable Kimani Kuria, our Chair of Finance, uh, they would tell members the same because they have a view of the situation as it is in the country. Your Excellency, with those very many remarks, uh, allow me to now invite uh, our leader of uh, majority in the Senate to give his brief remarks, then invite our Deputy President for his opening remarks. Thank you and God bless you and wish you all a good engagement throughout the day and for the cabinet who will be here for another two days, all the best in your engagements. Thank you.